thank you so much for being here today. This means a lot. I know um, we're we're kind of, you know, the whole, well, the whole country, the whole world, but the Seattle film industry in particular is being impacted by this. And uh, I was seeing this as a good opportunity for us to uh, share a little bit about our craft and our mm -hmm. relationship and how we're dealing with the crisis um, for history and uh, educational purposes. And that may all be cut, but uh, so Jeremiah, um, tell me a little bit about how you got into the film industry. I fell into the film industry, honestly. Uh, it was kind of a weird, happy accident. Um, way back in the day in 2005, uh, um, I was approached to work on a feature film as an executive producer and, and a producer. And um, I had never really been in the industry, but like the career I had before that, I was surrounded a lot by marketing stuff i figured why not this would be interesting and fun and put some money towards something that's creative and it and uh, so i started doing that project and um weirdly enough just through marketing skills made it a underground success when as a first a first movie like i don't want anybody to see it because it's just like it shouldn't have been like, it's really interesting. It's really quirky and, and odd and stuff. But, like, I just, we did a killer job marketing something that was, like, B level and under. <laughs> so, like, I was, I was surprised, but I caught the bug then. And I just started producing and a few years later um, ended up wanting to be more, uh, more, involved with the creativity as far as not just a creative producer but I wanted to like be behind the camera and learn wanted to learn everything I could um about directing and I was we were uh, kind of working with some really big directors and stuff and one of them really caught my eye and he was actually a, a he teaches advanced creative directing and like he was amazing and I kind of saw a lot of the directors like um that were kind of DP directors and stuff in the industry around me. And, and I had my first taste of what a real character director was. So I, um, I honestly dedicated like my vision to like someday becoming a character director, a good, a good director, or like a real director, not just a camera operator or director of photography, but like I wanted to learn everything about all of it anyways. But like I wanted to make sure that by the time I, started directing that I was ready for it not just making the same kind of mistakes that I had seen other other filmmakers make of just jumping in direct into directing and not really knowing like what to do <laughs> like the the significance of the role of, of a director would be um so I actually didn't start directing until like 2013 or 14 um it was it was a while um, because I wanted to make sure that I was ready specifically, but which that gave me a lot of time to um, also learn uh, it, to be a director of photography. And, and I fell in love with that. I fell in love with uh, blocking. I fell in love with camera movement, which um, brought me into uh, specializing and becoming an expert in, in camera stabilization with gimbals and, uh, and, aerial cinematography I fell in love with that right off the bat and it all kind of um as an artist it it was all these little things that came together that really refined my style and what I was doing and allowed me to to take these specialties like aerial cinematography and, and camera stabilization and add them to to my repertoire of a of a um director of photography and really stand out and so with that, I kind of got really lucky again. Like, again, all that just kind of fell in my lap. And it was um, a lot of dedication to learning and, and wanting to, like, strive to be better and at what um, better for myself as, as an artist and as a, a creator. So I've been doing it ever since. Everybody in the industry, unless you uh, were just born with a silver spoon or some, some good luck, uh, some of their early projects were, you know, very rough. I know my, my early projects, there were some like that. 
I also say like, well, the worst project seems to be the ones where I establish the best friends or. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. The networking is, is your life source in, in this industry and everything. And like, I have made some of the greatest friends through the industry. And it's funny because it's like now, like I look at my life and I have, I've brought friends into the industry and I've, the people that I know and that are like the closest people to me, they're all industry people and they are, they've become my family and stuff. And, and that's, that's what is amazing because like when you have that family feel to a, a creative industry, like you all get to work together making amazing projects and stuff. And like people have, brilliant ideas and fun ideas, quirky ideas. Some of them might be kind of stupid, but they're still fun to like to do anyways, because it's like pr good practice and they come out like interestingly weird and everything. But like, that's, it's like, it's like having this family of like, of like creative oddballs just playing, like just having fun and just enjoying like what they do. And it's, it's not like an, any other industry I've ever experienced in my life. Right, right. Well, you know, I was, this, this crisis has, uh, you know, I, I live alone. Um, and the, the gal I was seeing is like, I'm social distancing. So mm -hmm. that sucks. But um, I go like, well, I've got all this freaking equipment. And then I've got uh, a little bit of a medical background from a, a job way back when. Yeah. So I'm like, I can pull this off. And so this is just like us having fun and supporting exactly. the local industry yeah exactly you always want to support your your local industry and that's a, that's the thing is like when you are when you are supporting the others around you like they reach out and support you when they have other jobs and so i mean i haven't personally advertised much at all my entire career it's all been through word of mouth and through friends in the industry and stuff who just all working together on things. And, um, I'm kind of curious what would happen if I did advertise, <laughs> like, like how far could I go? Like I've been, I've been doing pretty good so far. Like what, what if I, I've actually been asking myself that a lot the last few months of like, what if I do actually like make an effort to put myself out there even further? So it's like, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I like, I like to imagine there's a crust that I haven't reached yet so I can strive for something, but yes. I'm just like you, I'm waiting for the phone to ring. I'm mm -hmm. somewhat active on social media, but it's not like I'm constantly putting out my best work or, yeah. but you know, like I, I've been directing and, and camera work since I graduated film school, but my career has led me into audio and you can like promote a finished film or something, but mm -hmm. a lot of corporate stuff, no one's ever going to, yeah. you can't share that. And the films only come out one, you know, once a year or every two years, you never know. Cause you oh, yeah. doesn't get a ton of those. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's true. And, and you honestly have become like one of the top like audio people in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. And it's, it's always been a pleasure to like work with you on things is you're definitely like, I think top three that I know of that are like the choice to go to. Oh so, God. Like yeah. it's, it's been, it's, it's really cool because like, it's been a pleasure watching watching your career grow and then also watching you grow as as a videographer and a cinematographer and a director and like it's i've gotten i've been really lucky to watch a few people in this industry over the years like blossom into what they've become and it's fascinatingly beautiful it's a it's almost like watching the sunrise like it's so incredible seeing these careers like you're like I, I know where you, I know where you've come from and to see where you're at now. It's awesome. It's so badass, And, and that's, that's, that's another perk of this industry is you get to see people go from learning and trying to strive to figure their footing out to like becoming these amazing filmmakers. And they like, 
it's it's really encouraging to see that and i like i hope to god that i've like been able to do that for anybody is like is the same because like i feel lucky to have witnessed a lot of of seattle like grow amazingly in the independent community especially i think when we met way back when you were primarily a producer director and we had some cool conversations. The uh, film office was doing these uh, meetups at the um, Sorrento Hotel, I think. Yeah. Oh, that was a minute ago. <laughs> that, was a, that was a while ago. Yeah, that was so We've known cool. each other for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there was one, like, Buck Henry was there. I'm like, oh, I'm like three feet away from Buck Henry. Oh, this is yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. I, remember, I think the last one I was there was... Um, uh matthew lillard right yeah that was an interesting conversation he's a rad guy and his, his sister still runs the oh state. i love amy like yeah. she's amazing yeah she's one of my favorite people to chat with she's yeah. she's she's pretty cool <laughs> like, so yeah in terms of superlatives you're uh you know you're one of the top it, in my mind you're the top aerialist in town uh and in terms of creative producing and stuff, your projects are always innovative and kind of like pushing the edge. Um, I try. You, regardless of, of how it got distributed, the, the thing we did for that, um, that race car driver was super fun. Oh yeah. Super yeah. well organized. Thank you. Yeah, yeah as, a, as a director, I try to always like push, push the bounds of what, what is normal. Um, I have a lot of clients that will come to us and be like, hey, we want to create a commercial piece or a corporate piece. Like, this is kind of like what we're thinking. And then what I really enjoy is taking their ideas and then jumping it to a whole nother level. Like, when you see a client get ridiculously excited about the ideas that you're taking their their thoughts and molding them into something even more amazing, and it's, like, that, that excites me. Like, I love that. I love seeing, and when they see the final product, they're so giddy and they're so excited and so stoked on it. Um, and I always want to be pushing that. I always want to be striving to, like, to be to be better filmmaker, to, like, think outside the box. And, like, there's, you can, corporate and commercial stuff, you can, you can do a dime a dozen for corporate and commercial. But to, like, to think of how to do it differently weirdly and like make it fun and exciting or or make this a story inside of a of a of a piece that people like will watch and be like oh that was that felt really good to see that like we got done doing one for a, a company called peterson cheese um and that was that was a lot of fun because we got to like take some really beautiful imagery and stuff and and tell a story about a, a homegrown company that kind of came out of like built itself out of out of the ground up here in Seattle and like when you watch it like you really feel the people you feel the family atmosphere inside that company and stuff and like it makes you want to go and work there really bad and like that's what that's what I'm always striving to do is like is create create really good emotion behind everything not just narrative work or anything but like behind your commercial work your corporate work like you always want to strive to like create emotion in, in the audience. And so I think that's one thing that like keeps me excited about it is like, I'm always, I'm always, it's always different and interesting and, and trying, trying something new. Yeah. So if, if I was just doing the same old commercial stuff over and over and over, like I, I feel like I would probably get really bored quickly. As a cinematographer, I feel you're the only one in town who is very advanced in motion work with your gimbal work and your drone work. And it's just like, I mean, that's a specialty, but to already, to also be able to have those advanced skill levels, but being a quality director, producer, cinematographer, and, but you can say like, oh, we should get an aerial shot of this. And, you know, we should have half a day for gimbal work, you know, and then, yeah. Um, like I can add those as like minimal 
things like, oh, I can, you know, but it's just like, yeah. And, and, you know, most folks, they don't think about those shots. Movement tells story. Camera movement tells story and stuff. And it also invokes emotion and everything like that. And like, that's something you can't, you can't forget about. Um, I, I was, I think the reason that like, I've, I've, gotten to the place with with camera stabilization and aerial cinematography is because I jumped on it right in the beginning like when especially the aerial cinematography like right when that came up I was I was all over that and um experimenting with with uh, uh, a drone that that had to be built just to see what what was possible because like I saw it happening over in Europe there's just a few guys flying these GoPros around and stuff. I was like, what is this all about? And um, so I jumped on with the company uh, DJI right when they came out. I was, like, I was on board with them right away. And I've been with them ever since. And they, they, they do really good by me because, because I've, been with, I've been with DJI and been kind of a big voice in the Northwest with them for so long. Um, but then uh, camera stabilization the gimbals and stuff right when that came out like i was invested in learning that and becoming an expert in that as well because i felt like those things those were tools that would help me um tell story more cinematically and and even when it comes to commercial work like i want i want my commercial work to look cinematic like oh it's 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 heart-wrenching seeing some of the commercials shot Today you see them even on on a, on the Google ads and stuff like that. You're like, ooh, it's like this could this could be so much more visually pleasing, yeah. <laughs> like just with a little bit of effort in it. Um, but so like that's like I like I said, I strive to be better at what I do. I always want to be progressing, and I try to also encourage everybody around me that that I work with and stuff was like always always progress to be better at what you do like you'll never hit a point where you know everything like continue to learn all the time so and I'm I'm always always like learning experimenting and 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 examining other other cinematographers work that also specialize in camera stabilization aerial cinematography and like learning new ideas and taking those to like my own my own unique style of level and, and everything so i think that's what has really helped me stand out is just like a sick dedication to like always be pushing to be the best that i can be in that moment or on that job